After the Nanjing Yangtze River Bridge in China, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is the second most used suicide site in the world. For Kevin Briggs, the Golden Gate Bridge is also the site where he has saved hundreds of lives. From 1994 to 2013, Briggs patrolled the bridge and talked down strangers thinking of ending their lives. A conversation that started with asking the person how they are, followed by a very meaningful additional question. What are your plans for tomorrow? Now retired from policing duties, Kevin Briggs continues this important work with his organization, Pivotal Points. Briggs now hopes he can reach people in crisis and make a difference long before they have to be talked off the ledge. I think people here love it as much as people who are out of country. We still like to go down and see it. I like to go down and see it. You know, it doesn't change that much, but just it just feels different every time you go down. You look over that rail, I saw the Queen Mary go underneath at one time. So many different things occur. You, you see seals, you see porpoises. You meet people from all over the world each and every day down there. Each and every day is a new experience. It's really neat. It's a neat place to visit. People know they hear the Golden Gate Bridge and they think, well, most of us think about the beauty and, and seeing San Francisco. But then there's that dark side of it. As far as I know, it's the top site in the United States for loss of life to suicide. I started with the California Highway Patrol in 1990 as a traffic officer. My first call was a woman, I believe in her 30s, that was over the rail standing on the cord, and I had no training. I didn't know what to do. I just walked up to her and began talking to her. And uh, she did come back over that rail, but you could see the, how, how scared she was, and I'm sure you could see how scared I was. So it was a crappy thing for me to have to do without training. Uh, if things are better now, there is some training involved. So we've come a long way. I try to think if I, if I was in their shoes, what would I want to happen? Do I want some cop with a big five pound badge walking up to me telling me what to do? Or being a, a smart ass telling me to jump because I'm worthless? Or would I want somebody who comes up who is gonna have the empathy? Gonna say, man, you're having a bad day, you're having bad weeks, you're having bad months, maybe you're having bad years. But we want you to come back over because we care and we're gonna take you to a place where they care and we're gonna try to get you some help. When I walk up, I am not Sergeant Kevin Briggs with the California Air Patrol. They see the uniform, they see what I do. I'm just Kevin and that's what I want it to remain as. Well, with Kevin, when I received that call, uh, I was on my motorcycle and I rode down the sidewalk and I saw him around the North Tower. And as I was getting off my motorcycle, he saw me. And he was on the sidewalk, but he went right over that rail. And I thought he was gone. It wasn't until I walked up closer and I saw that he was still there. I don't know how he managed to grab onto something and stay there. 
he wanted someone to listen. According to him, people were not listening to him, really listening to him. We talked for about 90 minutes. And actually, for that 90 minutes, I spoke maybe four or five minutes out of that whole thing. I was just there listening. And almost that entire time, I am below him slightly. I want him to look down on me, not me looking over the rail at him, because I want to empower him, show him that he does have significance, self-worth, and there are people that care. Maybe one to two percent of the folks live after that fall. What happens when somebody jumps off that bridge? I've talked with a coroner about this, and they fall about 220 feet, roughly 75 miles an hour. You hit that water, it's it's tough, it's really tough. You know, many people many people die in impact, but then quite a few people don't. So it's a horrible death. And the bridge was opened in, uh, I believe, May of 1937. And there's been well over 2,000 people who have leapt to their death from that bridge. The Board of Supervisors for the bridge voted to put in place a safety net, a safety barrier uh, on the bridge. And that's going to take place within the next three years. There are studies that show if you take away certain means that someone was going to do, uh, it significantly reduces the number of suicides. If you are diagnosed with a mental illness, bipolar, depression, whatever that is, so what? It's an illness. You didn't ask for this, you didn't want it. It's like cancer or something else. We need to work on this. You're still a person. There's people that care for you. Talk to someone about it. Maybe it's not to that extreme where you have a diagnosable mental illness. Maybe you're just going through some rough times. There's a lot of people out here who can help. <laughs>